and they've been very interesting and funny in some cases. A lot of good information. If you go back through all of the, the videos that Stephen has posted, there's some really good training information on there. And it's, it's truths and practices that I've done for years that have, you know, it's why people are sitting here today. But it's time that we stop thinking about training for entertainment purposes only. There's a lot of people who enjoy watching training. They want their dogs better. Mm, but they really want somebody to do it for them. Unfortunately, most people, most trainers are not as honest as I am. I tell them it doesn't do any good and if they're still determined, they usually go somewhere else and fail miserably and then they come back and realize it is up to them or they get rid of the dog. I tell people, or I practice, and ask people, is what you're doing with your dog or your kids going to get you where you want to be? Is allowing your dog to jump all over company at the door going to get you where you want to be? Is you tugging and letting the dog run around the house, chewing up everything, going to get you to have the dog you want to end up with? Is the dog running, dragging you to other dogs to play, going to get you a dog that you can travel with and go anywhere? Probably not. Now, Skippy... I don't have him down here all that much because he's kind of a little pain in the neck. He's a non-sporting dog and he's mouthy and he's opinionated. And... But this is one of the dearest little dogs you'll ever meet in your life. It's probably four years ago. Oh, it's got a... No, it's longer than that. Almost six years ago. Japers, you're getting old. I got a call from a friend of mine that worked at the veterinarian's office. And she said, this little dog was raised, it was a very nice puppy. The husband thought it was just the best thing in the world. He loved it when the dog growled at everybody. It would sit on the end of his recliner and growl at anybody that came near. The wife really got irritated. She would chase him around with a fly swatter. Well, the husband thought it was really funny he snapped at the grandkids. He'd never been socialized. He was just in their home. And that was it. When he was about a year and a half old, he hadn't been neutered. He was getting aggressive. Surprise. In the vet's office, my friend went to reach for him. He opened her hand right up. Now he's under quarantine for 10 days. They were going to then change and put the money, instead of neutering him, to euthanasia. What can you do with an aggressive dog? What they were doing was not getting them where they wanted to be. What they were doing was getting them to where they were, they were at. Oh, they felt bad. They cried. They felt so bad. But he's got to be put down because... With that mentality, that means you get rid of this one and you get another one, right? That's how that works. So my friend called me and said, would you like a dog to use as 
a demo dog to teach. At that point, I was working with veterans who had some problems, who in many ways acted the very same way this dog did. Reactive, didn't trust anybody, was not afraid to hurt somebody, mouthy, opinionated, and not willing to participate in anything. So Skippy was a wonderful demo dog to teach lessons concerning trust, betrayal, um, consistency, honesty, and yes, correction. This dog had never had a fair correction in his life. He had never had any fair instruction in his life. All he'd had is make up your mind and then get the fly swatter. Huh, Skip? There was a time when you needed a line on him because he would bite you if you reached for his face, his collar, anything. All this takes is trust. You have to prove yourself trustworthy, and then the dog chooses to listen to you. There was a time... Hey, Julie, will you come here? Julie loves this. She doesn't know what I'm doing. Okay, now, you're just going to take him. Easy. Good boy. He trusts me. Now, he can go to someone else. You can talk to him. Good boy, Skip. He's actually in a very vulnerable position. And because I said it was okay, it's okay, isn't it, Skip? So when we do this training, the people here are so fortunate. First of all, I mean, we have a good time. So this is, this is a social time. And I enjoy it, they enjoy it, and it's a good time. Everybody comes here, they're friends. It takes us a good half an hour to get everybody quit talking so we can get moving. It's really pretty cool. This is a circle of people. But instead of concentrating on performance, we're going to do obedience. We're going to do obedience as one of the things. But obedience is not our main focus. Agility is not our main focus. Starting every dog as if it's going to be a service dog is our main focus. When you start them to be as if they're going to be service dogs, you've got all those good things in place so that you can come up with any other activity you want to do. So, in just a second, I'll be right back. I'm going to put Skippy away. Hold on. Now, I'm kind of dressed in my work clothes today. It's on purpose, because we're working. As much fun as we have, it's work. Take this very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Bleach. <laughs> it's authentic. All right. Um, you'll remember Harley once Noah... Abandoned by the side of the road. So much hair, he couldn't see and he couldn't hear. The first time he saw himself in the mirror, he growled. He was so afraid to have anybody do any correction on him. He was fearful of other dogs. He was fearful of people. If you spoke loudly, that dog would just wilt. Now you can talk about as loud as you want to. Good dog. We started him as if he was going to be a service dog. The jury was out. We didn't know whether he was going to be a service dog or not. But starting him that way gave him the best start there was. Now because this dog had never been taught to play, he'd never been taught to challenge, he'd never been roughhoused with, he assumed he was to be calm. He'd always sit back, he's always probably sat back and watched activity. He probably was in a pen, never allowed to participate. Maybe as a puppy. But 
But the beauty of this is, he learned to watch activity instead of always being the center of it. <coughs> so we taught him patience, taught him to be handled, taught him to walk on the lead. Okay, go ahead, Carolyn. He started out Noah. Good job. Good boy. And his name was changed to Harley because it was determined that he did have the possibility of being good enough to be a service dog. So he learned all of the manners. Then we have the choice, let's see, do we want him to be an agility dog? Do we want him to be an obedient dog? He's very obedient. Do we want him to play? Do we want to do grooming competitions? Do we want to do any other thing we want to do? Or do you think there's a possibility of moving him on to a higher level of service dog? So we did a little testing, didn't we, Carolyn? We did. Okay, go ahead. Now, Carolyn is about as clumsy a person as there is on the face of this earth. Oh, and she falls down. So, how does Harley deal with helping somebody up? Now, that's her whole weight on that dog. Well, that part's pretty good. He had a problem with, um, he didn't know how to play. When you don't know how to play, it's very difficult to teach the dog to retrieve. Good job. Wait. So as a service dog, you had to do it with a little cal you know, calmer, not just the play. Because you're walking in a business when this happens. Good job. Thank you, Harley. Bring that here. Sit. Thank you. Good gift. Good gift. Thank you. Then he has to be able to go into businesses, up and down stairs, through rotating doors, elevators. up and down elevators. He has to be in the middle of picking up school kids. He has to be dependable when other people's dogs are playing, when rude people rush up and want to pet him. Hey, lady. Hey, lady. Hi there. With me, Harley. Good job. Can I pet your dog, lady? Wait. He is a service dog. He doesn't have vest on. No, but he is a service dog. Get out of the way of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and let me pet your dog. Harley, be easy. Good boy. So I can... Lady, I like dogs. Good, I really good. like dogs. Lady. That's enough now. Thank okay. you for petting him so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, <laughs> Thank you for saving me. <laughs> Good boy. So, Good boy. With me, Harley. Good what boy. did he do last night, Carolyn? Last night, he got to go to the hospital and the clinic, to the pharmacy, the optical store, Walmart, a karate studio, <laughs> and then back for class. So, where did he have any problems? None. Really? Absolutely none. So because somebody's done some really good training and because somebody has done some really good socialization and because Harley's having no problem. Now he needs to sit up there by you. Pull him aside and sit there. Harley, would you sit? There. Wait. There. Good. Now he doesn't, <laughs> okay. Harley's been kind of a tricky one to train. We had to do good cop, bad cop. Guess who was the bad cop? <laughs> Me. So, Carolyn's the good guy. So, the last place Harley really wants to be is with me. That's okay. Because Carolyn, because he was so, you know, he started to blow most dogs, um, Carolyn couldn't be the person that was tough on him. He's not as resilient when you start pushing him. And retrieving... It is, not whether you want, you know, it's not if you want to, it's because I said so.
Now, Harley's actually become a bit protective of you, too, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about this, it doesn't mean... Wait. Hi there. Hi. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Good boy. Come on. Good job. It doesn't mean he can't walk with me. Good boy. Wait. Excellent job. Do you sit? Harley, sit. Good job. It means he would rather not. He has no right to refuse. If you drop food on the floor, what does he do? Ignores it. Really? Oh. So you don't have to have a toy to get him to play? You don't have to have food to bribe him? Really? Okay, what if um, we walk up to another dog? Come here, Harley. Wait. Good job. He's not pulling to get to the other dog. So you haven't done a lot of play groups with him? Nope. Really? Hey, leave it. What does he do for grooming? He stands perfectly. Does he? Why isn't he? <laughs> no. no. It's really funny because Harley, Harley really hates not being groomed. The purpose of him being long is they're coming back in about two. He went actually for a weekend with his new person, with Rick, and he was like perfect which was very nice. He slept next to Rick's bed. He was right there. He Grace. would not go when somebody else Grace. tried to take Grace. him outside. He Grace. wanted to be with his person. Good job. Grace. Now, we've been working on him for not quite a year. This Grace. is the epitome of a service dog. Good Grace. Thank you. Grace. Now, if we really thought Wait. about it, I'll bet you most of these things are things that everybody would like in their dogs. You wait. You wait. Now, Carolyn, she's never trained a service dog before. She's actually only trained one other dog, really trained it, and that's her own. Carolyn has no idea how good a job she's done. Thank you. So what has training that dog done for you, Carolyn? Uh, he has given me such a feeling of purpose and accomplishment, of leadership, um, to be able to go out and educate people um, about service dogs and about training, about what a well-mannered dog should be like, um, that they can take a dog from a rough beginning and work with them to show them that there is potential and possibilities with their dogs. Um, he is just such a wonderful dog to be with. He's very calm, um, he's sweet, and he is so willing to work and um, to do things for me. And that's why he works for me, is because he wants to help me make sure that I succeed and do well. And so when there's something that he can do to help with that, he sees that as his purpose and his reason for helping. Okay, you have a sec your dog, Tut, mm -hmm. is a heck of a performance dog, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The first time in the ring, she was high-scoring dog. So that tells you somebody is a pretty darn good trainer. So you've got one who excels at performance. You have one that's excelling as a service dog. Which one are you limited by? By the performance dog. That's right. Yep. Because that's all he can do, really. If this is your default mode, you can always turn him into a performance dog, but you cannot turn the performance dog into this. He's, service dog, yep. he's too high powered. Yep. It doesn't mean he's bad. Leave it. it means Carolyn will never start another dog by just doing performance. Yep. Never, never, never. That's right. Never, ever. Because at this point, she also has Roy in her house, who's also a service dog. It's actually a positive for Tut because he only has to do performance and she isn't trying to correct him for not being calm. It's pretty cool. So, 
Otis is a very calm dog, isn't he? He's yeah. a year old. No, he is. You're bad. He is a good dog, isn't he? He's a well-mannered dog. Here he is absolutely no problem at all. So what's his other job? Showing. Showing. Oh, confirmation classes. He goes in and he has how many points? Five. Five points. He's just a year old. So the manners has actually helped him because the handler can take him. Yeah. He's got confidence. He can walk in the rank and do well. All right, we have Diva over here and Sue. Okay, now Diva is pretty well mannered. She's she's Sue's little companion, companion for her husband as well. She's cute. They spend a lot of time together. Okay. Now she starts out with manners. So what are your goals for her, Sue? To be a service dog, so yeah. I can take her out and about everywhere. Yep. Um, she's an emotional support dog at this point for particularly Sue's husband and Sue as well. But Sue likes would enjoy reading dog classes, things like that. Um, unfortunately, Sue drives an hour to get here, so it, it's it's tough. But that's a sweet little dog, isn't it? It is, and she's she's been a real good match for our household. Yeah, yeah. Now you had a dog that was. Not quite as well mannered. Correct. Big difference, isn't it? Huge. We talk. My husband and I talk about that quite often. And for that, she's a wonderful teaching dog. Okay, Dale. Yes. Dale started out with a dog with some real issues, and Dale's been working. Sometimes Dale has gotten herself into some situations, and it's. Like a lot of people, she trains part-time. But when she's busy, when she has guests, when there's stuff going on, um, we get distracted. That's when Maggie gets in trouble, isn't it? Yeah. So, Dale would like to do more. What would you like to do with her, Dale? I'd like to be able to take her to uh, the farmer's market to other people's homes and have her stay calm and easy and have be patient not, and be, not be jumping up be still when you stop yes, yes say so I have a question for you barking with, is what you're doing right now going to get you to a dog that sits patiently by your side no no so what is it you want her to do I'd like her to uh, I guess do what Noah or Harley is doing. So why is Harley there and not her? Because she's got too darn much lead, and you're allowing it. Okay. So what should you do about it? A shorter lead. Or tie her. Or tie her. Yeah. Yeah. I, she was tied, but then she was facing. Oh well, the then I would let her go too. Now think about that. You just said what your goals were on video. While the dog walks around. Mm -hmm. So I should right? Grab or grab the lead and put your foot on it so she can't walk. You settle. Maggie, you settle. You sit. Uh-uh, not sit. Settle. Settle. Now, if you don't make it a priority, it will not be. Okay. Right? Yep. This is very common in training. No. See, you're depending on a position to fix an attitude. Yep. Now what, okay, everybody in here, what would be the cure for what she's going through right now? Tying the dog. She's done everything except tie. So should I tie her up now? Because you want success, isn't that right? Maggie, come on, here. Good. Now look where the rug is. That was not set back there so the dog 
has an easy time of being calm. That was set up there so Dale could hold her. Now this happens, and I'm not just picking on Dale. This is, this is, now push it back there. She can't get that. There you go. Now that says you intend for her to lay there, right? Now move your chair away. This is very common. Maggie, subtle. In busy people. They have trouble sitting still, so they would rather fidget with the dog than sit there still themselves. It's very difficult, isn't it? When I when we got here and I tied her up back here, mm -hmm. she plopped down. But then you stopped it and you brought her back out right. so you could argue with her. Well, I, yeah. I wanted her to be observing what was going on with the other dog. She is. She was had her nose against the wall and was so going what? to sleep. What's here that's that interesting? She can't speak English. Okay. So if we really want the dog to be calm, the last thing we want is the dog up walking around and us hollering sit and down and... No. Because, tell her you'll be right back. Tell her. Maggie, I'll be right back. Okay, come over here. I'll be right back. Good girl. Now, isn't this what you want her to do? Mm-hmm. How was... How was holding her with her walking in circles going to get you that? No. No. This is, and Dale's a good sport about this, okay? I deliberately picked on her because she was doing that. All right? Dale is a dear person, and she really does want this dog to be good. But it's us that has to change, not the dog. And we know that most of the time she's very sweet. Yes, we do. But if that's what we want, then we have to do that consistently. And we have to be aware, if she's not doing what she should, then immediately she's tied. Immediately. Diva is tied. Do you see that? She's next to Sue. But if Diva acts badly, Sue would move away from her. So this is a privilege, not a right. Okay? Now, you need to do that same thing. Look at how calm she is when she's tied. When she's with you, she knows exactly how to push the right buttons oh, to yeah. get you what you fall for. Sometimes. She gets tied a lot at home. But here, yeah. <laughs> you, you get drawn into that often. Yes, I do. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if our goal is that this dog is really calm so we can go to the farmer's market and we can take this dog anywhere, is what you're doing going to get you there? No. Not the way you were doing it, was it? No. This will. Yes. This will. And this is the next this is the next step for you. She's tied, but she's tied closer. Mm -hmm. We tie them away from us because we aren't disciplined. We like them way too much. Yes. I know. But it when we really come down to it, how much of our life is spent up doing stuff and how much of our life is actually sitting in a chair, reading, watching TV, eating dinner? More of it's that, isn't it? That would stand to reason that our priority for our dogs should be conducive to fitting them into that lifestyle, right? That's exactly what you end up with. So at home, if she's tied a lot, she's calm. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when she goes out, she needs to be calm as well. Yeah. And she's not calm outside. She wants to bark at things. Well, if she's out there, you know, and you're not right there with her, she stand up, I'll get you, don't you dare come over here, you know. She has to be as big and tough as she can be. Mm -hmm. You need to sit out there a little ways away from her, just exactly like this, and let her know that it's okay. Right? Cool. Okay, does that make sense? Yes.
All right. Joan kind of, she tries hard. You try very hard. You were trying too hard, weren't you? I was. Yeah. You got to relax and let this puppy grow up. Now, Petey was a little Airedale puppy that was here. Well, how old is she now? Eight months? Eight and a half. Eight and a half months. Okay, so she was here when she was eight weeks old for a couple months. Petey's wonderful. Joan's problem is not that she's not doing what she should. Her problem is the dog's not mature enough. She's a puppy. Right. So we have to allow this dog plenty of time to mature gradually. Now that she's no longer got her puppy hair and she looks like an adult, we have to remember, excuse me, she's still a kid. We've got to allow her to mature. Mm -hmm. Keep going the way you're going. It's a wonderful puppy. Every time I think, oh, we, we're there, and then she starts something new. So she's a 17-year-old dumb I, kid. I really actually am starting to see it very clearly. Yeah, that she's, she's not... She's pushing her limits, but, yes. um, I, you know, I thought we were on top of the voice thing, and she does talk to me quite a bit. Well, they're but oral, they're the, vocal. The, the talking part is actually kind of endearing, but the barking part, not so much. And, um, so... When is she barking? Uh, well, she gives me usually two barks when I get her food out. I'm actually okay with that. It's enthusiasm, and she does stop. I go, I go, shh. And she stops. She okay. just stops. Okay. But wow. that's when we do the food thing. And sometimes in the living room, I mean, when I'm feeding her, right? Okay. But in the living room, especially when you're on on the video, she just gets so excited. So is she loose? Uh, no, she's she. Well, if she is and she barks, she goes straight to her chain. That's why her bear. Put bear. a line on her and say that's enough. Okay. Now, first of all, I think it's nonsense for a dog to bark at you to get their food. Oh, she doesn't until the food comes out. And actually, just, I know you always think I make excuses. I expect I do. That sounded like an excuse to me. <laughs> but here's how it works. I get the food out. She barks. I say, shh. I open the top. If she barks again, I just turn around and go to the sink. I don't. Oh, come on. It works. Good. So why are you having a problem with barking? In the kitchen, I don't. In the living room, I do. You got a problem with barking because you're not controlling it. Okay, I. She's yeah, adding. She's adding places to bark. She totally is. So you are allowing her to dictate what will and won't go on. Okay. I'm not going to give you your food if you don't be quiet. She's going to start. you you're, She's going to be quiet, and then you're going to go, and she's going to bark again. If you're right there, dollars for donuts, you put that food down anyway. Guaranteed. If you were in a hotel yes. and that dog barks to eat, Not good. well, you're going to get asked to leave. And that's one of my goals. You go to somebody's home and that dog is barking to eat. Okay, we'll, we'll end the bark to eat. But you are allowing a little sliver to seep in there. Now she says, well, if it works here, I wonder where else it works. Okay, so I really hear you, and I can think of numerous moments. Where well, you can't help but hear me. I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so in the living room, for example, when a video comes up, or when I bring her food out, we want no barking, so she's on a lead. Am I doing up and saying no bark, or what am I doing? Well, you've already established with food that it's okay to bark once. once. She's not stopping at once, I'll bet you. She gives me a second, but she doesn't go past that. Oh, the oh, she gives me a second one, but, you know, it's not <laughs> so bad. That one's not quite as loud. I could you know, and, you know, oh, let's see. Okay. Right. Let's say I don't want any barking in the kitchen. Right, because that would be actually, my choice. That would be better. All right. First of all, I'd have that food in my hand. And I'd say, you quiet. I'm telling her I don't want barking in the beginning. She even lets one little, I said, quiet. I'd 
stand there? Uh, that dog would wait for 15 minutes. I said, quiet. She would learn that if she barked, she got nothing. I'm not going to put you away. You're going to stand right here. Now, if I have a dog in the kennel, Fargo was one. <laughs> he would jump up and down when you were taking his food out. If he jumped, I'd start walking. If he jumped, I'd back away. When he was back on the ground, he'd start jumping. I'd back away. It took me 20 minutes to get the food there. But he stopped it. It's behavior modification. So if you're doing anything predictably to that dog, and there's one area. Okay, she's a really good puppy. But at 17 years old, she's looking for advantages. She is. Well, okay. So what's the advantage of being taken by surprise? I'd turn that lousy video on. I'd have that dog in my hand. Enough. You have to let her know that you aren't just going to get tied to the wall. A timeout for a 17-year-old is about ridiculous. But you're doing that. And I'll guarantee you that's not going to stop it. Because at this point, she gets tied anyway. It's not a punishment. You have that line in your hand. Good girl. You quiet. Or shh, if you've done that. Okay? But she doesn't have the right to be mouthy. I actually have another question. It's one of the things that's the biggest one for me. Okay. When people, even my family, if they come over to visit, mm -hmm. but virtually anybody, if they want to pet my dog, they go straight for her head. Mm -hmm. Her mouth is right there. And she knows no mouth, but I have not been making it clear enough that no mouth is... No mouth. Well, first of all, you need to criticize your company. Well, yeah, I do. I move them back. No. No. Okay. I always pick the wrong thing. Okay, Carolyn. We need obnoxious. Do you want her? <laughs> The story you are about to see is true. You've got her. The you only got one power. To protect the innocent. True. But I have How do we train that? How do, how do we train her? Because oh, if I, I pull on this, right. I'm pulling against the chain on the wall. How does that correct her? It doesn't. I only actually added the leash. Where's your other collar? Um, I'm not sure I have one right now. Good. My dog ate my homework. No, I mean, serious. Okay. Second collar. We need a cup. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> this is kind of like Dale standing there saying, I want her to be calm with the dog circling. It's exactly the same thing. Everybody has their, everybody, Dale, this is not unique to one person. Does it feel good seeing somebody else get it other than you, Dale? <laughs> and they keep coming back. That's what's funny. Your heart's bleeding for her, right? Yes. All right. No, I'm good. I just. I, no, you're not. You I'm got a not, question. But, yes. You're not good with it. So that's. All right. Now, Carolyn is my obnoxious, crazy cousin from who knows where. Just does it. That's safe. 
saying, you're not correcting it. Right. I know, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. But, the but we've talked means... about this lots of times. So I have her on her chain in the house on her dumbbell. Yeah. And the second one with yeah. the second collar. You've got to have that second right. collar because those cue collars pulled in opposite directions cause a bite if she makes a mistake. <clears throat> this is for the barking. This is for the circling. This is for the inappropriate behavior with company. You can't do it with any other collar. You can't do it with a pinch. You can't do it with a choke chain. You can't do it. The cue collar is based on a growl, a nip, and a bite. Your growl is both your command and your praise. Easy, good, easy. A nip is when the dog is tied on one lead. A bite is when you pull two collars in opposite directions. When you have one collar on that dog, you got the dog tied with it, you got the second line on it, you're pulling against the chain. There's no correction. Right, okay. Maybe. None. Zero. Is that the same for when she is barking at cars? Absolutely. Okay. Good dog, that's enough. When I say that's enough, that's enough. Good dog. She immediately quit. When that collar was on there and I had that, I put just a little, easy. You, easy. Good, easy. Mm -hmm. Now this allows us to correct her where she's at, not have to go get her. Go get her and take her to her dumbbell. Nonsense. Okay, Carolyn, do your obnoxious self. Hi. Easy. Oh, you Daddy. easy, Hi, Daddy. easy, Hi, easy. Puppy. Look at your paws. Good, easy. Oh, and you got Good, teeth. easy. Look at your high puppy. Easy. Oh, you got nut paws here. Aren't they cute? Yeah. Look at she waves high. Good, easy. Good girl. Good, easy. Good puppy. Oh, ain't she cute? She's very nice. Look at her butt. See, look at her butt. Oh wow, look oh, at her butt. Oh, it's a nice butt. And a tail. Good dog. Whoa, good girl. Hi. Good job. Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Nice. Good easy. Good job. It is not Good up girl. to her whether your company pets her or not. It's up to you. This is why Otis stands there for a judge. Good easy, man. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. Too bad. If you're going to invite a human being into your home to pet your dog, you darn sure better trust or you better make sure they're safe. So if that dog is mouthing anybody, okay. no, oh, thank you. If that dog is mouthing anybody, that's got to end. If she wants to sniff them, it has to end because I can't tell when a sniff is going to become a mouth. Then you haven't done a good, jo good enough job predicting what that, I mean, making sure she understands when you say easy. I didn't just let her rush up there. I said easy before she started. Because I can't tell her to go ahead and do it and then correct this dog if I haven't given her a command. Because truthfully, when we're talking about watchdog, if I don't tell this dog to be easy, she's not wrong for wanting to back that person away. Right. So when you come right down to it, okay, you go up to Joan and say hi to her the same way. Hi, Joan! Hi! Hi! How are you? It's so good to see you! Hi! Joan, you be easy. I didn't hi. tell you. There you go. Hey, you Joan, behave yourself. You. He's a Joan, you behave. Oh, Joan! Good girl. Hi! I got <laughs> How's that feel to you? Horrible. <laughs> okay, so why wouldn't she need a little bit of help? A lot of help, yeah. <laughs> so if you're letting your company approach the dog like that, no. Okay. I don't have any relatives like that. <laughs> yeah, but you got people. You know, it's, do, actually. it's actually an advantage when you have a lot of them. Yeah. Because then the dog gets desensitized to it. If you don't do it only once in a while... Then it's an event. Okay. Now, this is Hunter. Hunter's here for training. Why don't you switch that line around so that I don't like him over the top of the heads. Now, Hunter is a 
very nice dog. He was a show dog, but he never made the transition to learn manners. So Hunter is now, he lost his home, um, he was in the show ring, and then he went to some nice people who just thought he was just going to, poof, because he was not a puppy, you know, there's no training to do. That's so totally crazy. He was trained to be a show dog. He's got to be trained to do exactly what Petey just did. Okay. Hi, puppy Easy. dog. Hi, puppy. Easy. Hi, doggy. Easy. Hi, doggy. We saw a similar reaction right Absolutely. there just a minute ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. I wouldn't like it. You wouldn't like it. But it's not up to us. It, sometimes we have to go to the doctor and they do all sorts of horrible things to us. We can't retaliate. Sometimes we have to put up with people that are idiots. We can't retaliate. Now, you take a dog that's a little farther along. Okay, scoot your chair just a shade more away from Cooper. Easy. Now, Carolyn is one of those crazy people. You went to visit. You went to visit okay. someone. Nope, you're right there. Nope. Now. You are going to talk to him. This is the next level up. Because Cooper trusts Nancy. All right, so Nancy, you're actually going to say, I'll be right back, and you're going to come over here with me. I'll be right back, Coop. Now, here's that obnoxious kid. And oh, you can't doggy. get... Easy. Doggy! Easy! Doggy! Hi, doggy! Oh, look at the easy. doggy! Easy. Good. Good. Oh, easy. Good doggy. You easy. Oh, the pretty dog. Okay. Good boy. Now we would be getting Thank over you. here if this were child. Go ahead and keep on. Oh. Honey. 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 Hi, puppy. Honey. Hi, lady. Look no. at the dog. Okay, no. Oh. Okay. Do you see he's a nice doggy? Isn't good he? Good boy. Boy. Good boy, Cooper. Good now boy. that prevents a bite. Good boy, Cooper. But it starts. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Right. Good boy, Cooper. Good dog. That's as pretty as it gets right there. Good boy. I remember one time we were doing a school program, and I had we had six dogs, and we'd taken three of them out to the car, and there were three of them tied on dumbbells waiting for us to come. Now, we were in the, in the gym. Okay, that's fine. While we're out loading the car, the bell rang, and that's where all the kids went to catch the bus. I came back in that room, and the room is just chock full of kids. I couldn't see the dogs. And I just, you guys are fine, easy, easy, parting my way back to the dogs. And there they sat. I mean, it was beautiful. But that's when you know you've done it right. Not hope. Good you don't boy, put up boy. with mouthy. I don't good care. Good boy. Anything you need to fix, you go back to two lines. Anything. Good, boy. good girl, Mag. She's being, She's being very good. Good boy, Hunter. You can't leave it up to the dog. Good boy, good Cannot. Now, over here we have Hunt or we have Hamlet. Kathy was letting him run to the door with her. She's got workmen. Hamlet is guardy and protective. Kathy started tying him. 
because I reminded her that if he goes with her to the door and he starts acting rude, what is she going to do? Correct him. That's not the message you want for the dog, is to correct it for wanting to protect you. So I recommended that she tie the dog. She did. The problem with it is, he was like 8 to 10 feet from the door. So now he's guarding the door. She just needs to move him away. Hamlet is very, very good, but he is a natural guard-type dog. Good boy. So Kathy needs to constantly... He's fine for people to pet him. He's not an oversensitive guy. He's fine. But it's people approaching Kathy that he has the problem with. Right? So Kathy needs to tell him he's to be easy. Hi there. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. You're fine, Hamlet. See him look? I mean, on video, you could see that. This dog wants to protect Kathy from everybody. He needs to have a clear message. You've got it under control. So, if we unhook him... Easy, babe. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, he's tied there. Okay, you stand up. Oh, excuse me. All right. So, if I'm... You're kind of over by the, by him. All right. So if I come through your door, where is it safe for me to be? Just about this far. Not any closer to him. You're coming this way. Tell him to be easy. See, he gets worried about you leaving him. He can't keep you safe. He needs a lot of conditioning. That's where he needs that second line. Because he needs to be reminded that he's okay. Good boy, Hamlet. So he's like the bank guard that stands at the door and guards. Nobody's going to come in your bank. So we want to keep this a, a safe space for us. Because if I come at you like this, yeah, I look like I'm attacking her to the dog. And because Kathy and Hamlet are together a lot, you can't fault that dog for wanting to keep her safe. This is his pack leader. But because you are with him so much, he needs to learn that if you say it's okay, it's okay. okay.